Welcome to part 3 of the SimSol Smart Sketch introduction. In this segment we'll cover the revamped quick sketch drawing mode and then quickly use some of the other tools and options in Smart Sketch. Now quick sketch mode was introduced in an older version of SimSol and it has some limitations back then. Since then we've been able to remove a lot of those limitations and it's become a lot more flexible. It is primarily used to draw a diagram footprint or in other words the perimeter of a blueprint. Once you've created the outer perimeter, you'll then switch over to the freehand drawing tools to complete the interior walls and components of your diagram. So to get started, we need to activate Quick Sketch. To do so, we simply go to the top of the screen, and this is the Quick Sketch button at the top. I'll click it, and I'm notified down at the bottom of the screen that Quick Sketch is now on. Just like before, you'll take your cursor to the canvas, Pick a starting point where you'd like your diagram to begin and left click the mouse one time. You'll notice that when I left clicked, my mouse pointer went from a crosshair to a regular mouse pointer. And down at the bottom of the screen there's a field called length that's asking for the length of the first wall. So I'll go to my keyboard and type in a number, in this case I'm going to type in 22, and then go to the arrow keys on my keyboard and hit the right arrow key to let Quick Sketch know I want this line to go to the right. Upon hitting the arrow key, you see the line get created. Now you'll notice this line is quite thick. That's because it is an exterior type of wall. If you decide you want to change the thickness later, we can always come back and do that. So what I'm going to do now is continue going around the perimeter of this blueprint until I've reached my starting point. The length field down at the bottom of the screen is still active, so I don't have to click back into that field or hit tab. I just continue typing in dimensions and going in the direction I want to go. Now one feature that we've added is how to draw a diagonal line. So let's say the front of this structure there's a bay window and it's got three sides and two of them are on an angle. I'll first go ahead and put in the dimension, I'll say five feet, and then I hit the space bar twice. That gets me to the angle field over to the right. As I'm looking at the angle field, I want to glance over to the left to look at the legend that's been provided to show the different angle degrees in which I can put in to create that line. So if I want this line to go to the bottom left, I see that the degree for that is 225. I'm going to go ahead and enter that and hit enter on my keyboard. Now I'll enter the flat portion of that bay window by typing in 5 again and just simply hitting the left arrow key on my keyboard. Now I want to put in the second angled wall of that window, this time going back up to the left. So I'll type in my dimension of 5, hit the space bar twice, and going back to the legend, I see that up and to the left is 135 degrees. Hit enter, and I've completed that bay window. Now I can continue on to the left, completing the perimeter of my structure. Now I've gotten to a point where I'm almost ready to close out the perimeter of the structure and return to my starting point. And I'm starting to notice that when I took my notes at the actual loss location, I might have mistakenly written the dimensions down because my bottom left edge and the top left edge are not lining up correctly. So it's most likely that this last 10 foot line that I drew is not correct. So what I can do is go down and click on that line and actually stretch it to the correct dimension and once it looks like it's going to line up nicely with that original starting point, I just simply go to my keyboard and hit the letter A, and that closes out my diagram perimeter. If at any time I feel like I need to go back and undo any of these lines, I just simply go up to the top left and there's an undo button. As many times as I click that, it'll take me back in each sequential step that I've done thus far. And if I want to redo those lines, I just simply click the redo button until I'm back to my starting point once again. So now I've got the perimeter done, at this point I can start using some of these freehand tools to draw the interior walls and components of this diagram. One of the things we discussed a moment ago was changing the thickness of this outer perimeter. If I'm not liking that or I think it's too thick, I can come up to the top and hit the Select All button. That selects each individual line that was done using Quick Sketch. And then I can come up to the Edit Tools here and change the actual wall type. 
I can change to the default format, which is a very, very thin line. I can go to an interior type of wall, and this is what it's currently set to is exterior wall. So you'll see when I click interior wall, all the lines get much thinner. However, if I'm not happy with that, I just come back up to the top left and click undo. So undo will do any actions that I've done, whether it's drawing or actually editing something that's already been drawn. So for the remainder of this diagram, I'm going to use some of these freehand tools to complete the interior. Some of these components might be things such as an interior wall with dimensions. If I click that and simply drag the line wherever I want to within the interior, it'll place that line with an actual dimension on it. Now one thing we haven't discussed yet is something called insert mode. Right now insert mode is off and what that means is I've just drawn this line and if I wanted to draw another line I'd have to come back over and click on the interior dimension wall line again and then draw my next line. What insert mode does is if I turn that on it will let me continually draw new lines without it having to reselect that tool. So if I come back to the interior dimension line and draw a new line when I go to draw another one, I don't have to click on that button again. I can just continue drawing interior walls however I see fit. Now, obviously that doesn't look right. I'm going to go ahead and click undo here to get rid of those last two walls. And then continue drawing some lines where they actually should be. Now an alternative to actually using lines to draw all of these interior walls, I could choose to use a free area tool, such as a room with dimensions tool. I click that and just drag an actual room and dimensions will be displayed at the bottom of the screen and once I'm happy with those dimensions, I just drop the room where I want it to be. If I need to resize that room, I would just turn insert mode off, select the room and resize it. So now that we've got a number of interior walls drawn, let's go ahead and add some components. These might be things such as doors, windows, openings, and wing walls. So let's start with openings. I'm going to go ahead and click the opening component tool, and we'll add one right here. Looks like it'd be between the dining room and the kitchen there. And I'll add another one on this side. Now I'm going to add some doors. So I'll go over to the door tool, I'll add some doors to these rooms which are connected to this hallway. So I'll draw one here, go back, select another door, add one here, and add another here. Now looking at this first door I drew, it might be a little too large, so I can come back up here to the arrow tool, select that door, and resize it. So these tools will take some practice. Once you get more familiar with them, they'll become much easier to use and you'll be drawing these diagrams much more quickly. I'm going to move the canvas over a little bit and draw a couple objects and show you how some of these editing tools work with these objects as well. So I'm going to start by drawing an exterior line or an exterior wall. You notice this line has a dimension of 22 feet and it is a thick line denoting an exterior wall. If I reselect it, that's when a lot of these different options become available here. As I discussed before, I can change the thickness of the wall by using these options here. And I can choose what I want to display about this wall. Right now it's set to show the dimension and the actual line. I can set it to show just the dimension, just the actual line, or both. I can also affect how far away this dimension line is from the actual wall line by using these tools here at the top. I can move the label down, I can move the label back up, and I can set it back to default. All objects will have this pivot point that I can use to rotate objects to make sure they're positioned correctly. I can also change the pivot point of that rotation by clicking on the pink dot and moving it down. You'll see that changes the actual pivot point of the line. So now we'll take a look at some of the alignment tools. If I go back over to Area Components and create a couple boxes with dimensions, I'll create a second one here. The alignment tools allow me to manipulate and position multiple objects at once. 
So in this case, I want to line these two rooms up according to the left edge. I just hold down shift on my keyboard and select them both and go to align left edges. This also works for align right edges, so I select them both, align right edges. Another option is to align horizontal centers. So if I have two shapes that are different widths and I select them and choose align horizontal centers, it'll center both the shapes down the middle. As I move over, I have some options here to actually change the size of these objects. I can make them both the same width. I can make them both the same height. And then lastly, I can actually make them both the same size, which will be this last option here. And once again, back to align left. Any of these edit tools that I use will affect anything that I have selected, even if it's multiple objects. So if I go to the pattern selection and choose a pattern, it affects any object or all objects that are selected. I can change the transparency and also go and change that fill color. Deleting objects is quite simple. I just highlight those objects by multi-selecting using the shift key on my keyboard and I can either hit the delete objects button at the top or hit the delete key on my keyboard. So now that I'm satisfied with this diagram, it's a very basic one. I'll go ahead and hit done. That returns me back to SimSol in the diagrams portion of my claim tree and there's my quick sketch. Once again, if I need to edit this or make any changes, I click edit diagram. That initializes quick sketch and I can go in and make whatever changes I need to to this diagram. So thank you for watching these three videos on the introduction to SimSol Smart Sketch. I hope that were helpful. It will take some practice to get used to this new tool, but once you do, you'll be creating great looking diagrams with not a lot of time and not a lot of effort. So from the team here at SimSol, we thank you very much.